Today, I'm gonna to show you how to add supports in the Creality Print Slicer. I'm gonna show you how to master the supports on your models so the supports peel away perfect. Step number one, what we need to do is open Creality Print, obviously. Step number two, what we need to do is import your model, and chances are you're already here. And step number three, what we need to do is go on over to this right-hand column over here. Chances are you've been having a hard time finding where the supports go. And there's a little mini tab right here. See it right here? There's like six or seven buttons, and it's actually the fourth one down where it says support. So click that tab. Then you can see I have a model that has been brought in here that needs a lot of support. Essentially any model that has overhanging areas where the printer can't print it because it's just gonna fall over, it needs supports. Then the next step is we need to enable support right here. This should pop up right away and it shows you a little diagram of what it looks like. So click on that box and enable support. Now the next one down, there's a couple different types of supports and this is really important to know. So there's the normal supports and then we have the tree supports and then we have a feature after that which is called auto or manual. I highly advise if you're somewhat new to this and just want the slicer to take care of it, what you want to do is do auto. So to give you a quick glimpse of the difference of what these two look like, we're going to do normal auto and then click slice plate. And you can click slice plate at any point just to show you what it's going to look like. And as you can see here, this is what normal supports look like. They're kind of more blocky and square and cube like. And then if we click on the next one, which is tree auto, then click slice plate. This is essentially what they look like. They're a skinnier version, sort of like a tree. And I'm guessing that's where they got the name from. And I advise that you use the auto feature. I have other videos on how to do the manual feature. That's essentially where you choose where to put the supports, but I would just do auto for now if you're somewhat new to this. Then the next setting down is the styling of them. You can do super slim, you can do super strong, you can do organic. And again, just kind of mess around with what ones you want. And they are exactly kind of how they sound. Like the tree slim, it's just a slimmer version. The tree strong is a stronger version. And organic is kind of just like what happens organically with the slicer. It'll figure that out for you. And if at any point, all you have to do is choose it and then click slice plate. And don't forget, you can use the back button up here in the upper left-hand corner and undo things that you've done. Then the next setting here, we have the threshold angle. This is essentially the angles at what the supports will be at. This is sort of a bad example of the angling just because this is kind of like a straight up feature, but if you had like a gnome or something where it was kind of like had to bend around the model, you would see a big difference on the angling. And you can kind of just mess around with the different angles of that. Honestly though, I leave it kind of at what it's telling me unless I have some model that's like really strange and weird. And I'd like to give you the best settings for every single model as far as adding supports to master it, but honestly, every model is a little different. As you get into 3D printing, you're gonna realize Every single model you 3D print is gonna be a little different and you have to kind of just learn all these settings with the supports and sort of just manipulate it as you go and master it, which is probably an annoying thing to hear in a how-to tutorial, so I apologize. And if you need any help, what you can do is kind of hover your mouse over the text and it will show you. It says on build plate only, this is the next setting. This setting only generates supports that begin on the build plate. And you might be thinking, well, they, they're they usually on the build plate, right? Well, in some models, sometimes they don't have room to do it. And they'll build the, they'll build the support onto the model if, if needed. But you'd have to see the model to understand it. All right, then some of these other settings, I'm going to try to move a little quicker here because there's a lot of things to go over. So we have on the build plate only, support critical regions only. This is like only doing the critical regions only to save on supports because a lot of times these so these slicers go way overboard with some of the supports then it says remove small overhangs obviously that's just like minimizing the smaller ones and then the small overhang area five millimeters then what's really cool is if we keep moving along here you can do um filaments for supports you can do different types of filaments a lot of people don't know this like for example what i could do is print this model in pet g but then have the supports in PLA so that they break away easier because it's a different material because they don't bond together as easy. Then if we scroll a little bit farther down, we have some of the advanced features, which is the first layer density. We have the first layer expansion, the top Z distance, which is essentially kind of like if we zoom in here, 
This is the top Z's distance up here. You gotta hold shift and left click to kind of like move the entire plate. I, I deal with so many slicers that it's hard to keep up with all of these different settings because they're a little different every one. The top Z distance, see this distance right here that's kind of like where it's gonna be breaking away. And it gets super technical with a lot of these other settings. Like we have bottom Z distance, base pattern normal, support wall loops. We have base pattern spacing, pattern angle. But what you can do guys is kind of just use the slice plate feature and just clicking back and kind of just do your best. Hopefully this video helped you learn how to add supports in Creality Print Slicer. Hit me up in the comments down below if you have any more questions, or if you want me to do a tutorial video to help you. Make sure to subscribe, I'll see you in the next one.